Welcome to Big Faces Worldwide. It's your boy Big Will, and I'm back with some boxing talk. Hey, listen, man, I wanted to just make a quick video um, and talk about the fights last night on the zone. Um, I really enjoyed the fights, man. Um, let's start off with the big baby Miller. He went up, he went up against Thomas um, Ademic. Um, I don't know what to say about big baby, man. Uh, the jury's still out on big baby. Um, it came to the ring, 317 pounds. Um, Thomas Ademic, he was 222 pounds. So do, you do the math, man. It's almost 100 pounds difference. Um, and it was very evident inside the ring, man. It was like, whoa. You know, I'm looking at Big Baby chase this guy around. Actually, Ademic did well, man. He came out and he came to fight. He didn't actually lay down for Big Baby, man. He was, he was, he was real light on his feet, man, to be a heavyweight. And um, I was impressed with him. Um, the whole place seemed like they was there to see Ademic, man. They was behind this guy. And um, it's just a shame that he could not, uh, you know, he could not put up a better a better fight against this giant. It was like David and Goliath in there, man. Big Baby just looked like a giant over him, man. Just was walking through his punches and, you know, just chasing him around the ring, man. And, uh... I don't know, man. I don't know. The jury's still out on Big Baby, man. I'm, I wasn't too impressed. He did what he was supposed to do um, to a demic. He went in there and um, got him out of there. But, you know, I don't see that uh, that power. Um, it seemed like, you know, Big Baby didn't knock the guy clean out, man. He doesn't seem to have that concussive power to just, you know, knock your lights out power. You know what I mean? And you being almost 100 pounds bigger than the guy you would think that you know he would be able to uh put his lights out but he didn't um i want to see big baby you know face some some type of uh adversity man uh, i want to see him go up against somebody you know you know he's he's going to outweigh every heavyweight um he's, he's so damn big man but i want to see him go up against somebody who's least you know at least going to put up a better fight than a demic a demic did come to fight no knock on him man but he just was too small, in my opinion, and too old. He was, what, 41, 42 years old. Big Baby's 30, you know what I mean? It just was a complete, complete mismatch. And, um, you know, Big Baby did what he was supposed to do, but, you know, in my impress, no, um, the jury's still out on him. Um, now, Arthur Better BF, man, versus Callum Johnson. Now, this was a real, real good fight, man. Callum Johnson said that he was going to come out and do what he did. He talked about it before the fight, and he came in and did exactly what he said he was going to do. So many people say what they're going to do and get in the ring and do something totally different. But Callum Johnson got in there and did what he what he said he was going to do. He went straight after Better BF, and, um, you know, he traded shot for shot with this uh, so-called boogeyman of the light heavyweight division, man. And, um, you know, uh, he looked good, man. But Butter BF showed me a lot, man. Um, he showed me that, you know, he can handle adversity, man. He can come, he can get up off the canvas and come back and get a knocked out victory. You know, we as boxing fans, you know, we are so quick to crown, to crown somebody king, man, just because they have a, a very good skill set and, uh, uh, you know, they go out there and obliterate their opponents and, you know, they look good doing it and they do this time and time and time again. But, you know, when they go up against somebody who's going to, um, Showed him some resistance, you know, oftentimes over the years I've seen that change, man. And so I always want to see a fighter go up against some type of adversity before I crown him king. And better be up went up against adversity, man. He got dropped, um, you know, after dropping Johnson. You know, Johnson showed composure too, man, because he could have easily hung, up, hung it up, man, and, you know, called it quits after he got knocked down. But, you know, he showed a lot of heart. And a lot of guts and will and got up and continued to fight and continued to bang uh, with Better BF, man. You know, but, you know, he didn't have a plan B. Better BF, after get dropped, he had a plan B, man. And um, after he got dropped, he, he went to boxing. He started boxing. He started moving around. Excuse me. I mean, he still was throwing his heavy shots, but, you know, he was, he was showing a little bit more footwork, man. And um, he showed that, you know, he have some more tools in the toolbox. And I love to see that from him, man. 
Um, he was able to come up off the deck and get the knockout victory, and I was impressed with him. And um, you know, I want to see him. I want to see him fight Bivol. That's what they're talking about. Um, him fighting Bivol. Um, you know, Bivol's very, very busy in that ring, man. Um, I don't know if Bivol um, will be able to, to take his power. Um, it's something that you know it will make a good fight. And um, hey, I'll watch it. You know. And now for the main event, Jesse Vargas and Thomas Delorme. I mean, that was a good fight. Two guys who were evenly matched, man. They went in there and, and you know, and gave us a show, man. Um, you know, two guys, were they elite level? No. But just because they are not elite doesn't mean that they cannot give us a good scrap. And a good scrap is what they gave us, man. Um, um, Thomas Delorme caught Jesse Vargas with a big right hand in the first round. And, um, you know, I, I think that surprised uh, Vargas. I think that surprised him. And um, he pretty much was on a back foot throughout the whole fight, man. Um, Delorme came to fight, man. Um, Jesse Vargas. I do think Jesse Vargas was winning the fight. Um, you know, I think he did, you know, just a little bit more than uh, Delorme for his effectiveness. Um, Delorme was fighting. It was very close, you know. Um, Delorme kind of goaded Jesse Vargas in that 12th round. In the last minute or so, he kind of goaded him into an exchange. And, um, you know, he, he, he waved Jesse Vargas on. Jesse Vargas waved him back on. And then they got into an exchange, and Jesse Vargas got dropped, man. Um, had, he not, had he not got dropped, had he not allowed Delorme to goad him into that exchange, he would have won the fight. That knockdown caused him to fight, man. Um, Jesse Vargas always seemed to be in these close fights, man. And, and it's, there's a couple reasons why Jesse Vargas has not been able to get over that hump, um, get over that hump, um, Jesse Vargas, uh, he does not have, if you think about the five top welterweights, okay, you think about Keith Thurman, you think about Earl Spence, you think about Terrence Crawford, you think about Danny Garcia, you think about Sean Porter, you know, something they all have is explosiveness, Jesse Vargas does not have explosiveness, you know, they all have uh, uh, that that killer instinct, you know. Jesse Vargas does not have that killer instinct, you know. Just because you frown up your face and try to look mean, man, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't resonate into the killer instinct, man. I mean, Jesse Vargas makes some mean-looking faces, man. He looks mean at times, but you know, it doesn't, you know, uh, resonate, you know, in into the ring, man. Um, I like Jesse Vargas, man. I think he has. Very good, good skills, very good fundamentals, very good, you know, he does everything pretty good, man, but he does nothing great, man. He doesn't have that explosiveness, and he does not have that killer instincts. He just seems content with just going, you know, just going through the motions and, and, and going on sort of like this seesaw back and forth matchup with his opponents. We've seen it with Adrian Broner. Uh, we've seen it with Thomas DeLorme. Now, can he um, knock, knock some opponents out? Yes, you know, can he can he drop a Tim Bradley in the twelfth round? Yes, can he go the distance with Manny Pacquiao? Yes, can he get Saddam Ali out of there? Yes, but uh, Jesse Vargas is not consistent with his efforts, man. Um, he's not consistent with it. He'll have like little sparks here and there, and he may catch one of them guys slipping. You know what I mean? Uh, but you know, a fighter who's on, up on his game, who's in shape. Um, who come to fight, man? They're gonna they're gonna beat Jesse Vargas um, every time, man. Um, but I think he got you know he got a lot of heart. He's very competitive, but you know he you know he doesn't have them things that I mentioned earlier. But it was a good fight, man. Um, I don't think either one of them um, deserved the shot at the WBC title, you know. So I don't know what that what that was about. WBC always pulling these always pulling these rabbits out the hat, man. I don't you know I don't understand what they're doing. I'll make a video about the WBC and the things that they're trying to do and the things they're trying to implement in the sport. But that's going to be on another video uh, sometime this week. But as far as the zone, the the zone app uh, for me, um, I st I'm still on the trial. You know, you get a 30 day free trial. Um, it's working pretty good, man. Um, you know, uh, the signal's good. Everything's nice and crisp and clear. But um, you know, as far as the um, production of it you know far as you know the commentators sugar ray leonard did a better job this week than he did with the joshua fight but you know i think he still um sucks as a commentator 
Um, Sergio Mora, I thought he did real good um, the first week, but this week it seemed like he kept repeating himself, saying the same things over and over again, um, talking about the Laura May uh, loading up. I mean, how many times are you going to talk about him loading up? I mean, he must I mean, he must have talked about it at least a dozen times, and I'm not exaggerating. Okay, he's loading up. God damn, we get the picture. You know what I mean? He just kept repeating himself and on, on, on different occasions during, during the fights, man. Um, but um, Brian Kenny does a good job, man. Brian Kenny does a very good job. And, you know, maybe um, they can get a guy like Roy Jones over there or, you know, somebody somebody like that who, who can offer something more than than what they're getting now, man. Um, Sergio Moore did do a decent job, but, you know, I just got tired of the, the repeats, man. Uh, he did a great job with the Anthony Joshua fight. But um, another thing I noticed about the zone is that last week, um, during the Anthony Joshua fight, I noticed that the referee, okay, the guy who was referee in the fight, one fight, and there was a judge judging. That next fight, that referee went to judge the fight, and the judge became the referee. And I went back and forth that night, and it went back and forth last night. I mean, what is that about? You know what I mean? I mean, you cannot get um, judges who you can, you know, just set set judges and set uh, uh, referees that you got to keep alternating them like that. You know, I didn't like that. Um, and Michael Buffer, I guess he only comes out to announce the main event. You know, he, he's, he got an exclusive deal with the zone. Hot's off to him. Um, but the, you know, the other guy, uh, I forget his name. I can't think of his name right now, but you know, um, you know, I, I've seen him through the years, but you know, if you've got Michael Buffer right there, let Michael Buffer announce the fighters, man, introduce the fighters. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I think Chris, Chris Mannix did a good, did a good job. Um, but yeah, man, um, overall, I think the zone, you know, they get, they get like a B minus from me. Um, I think they need to get their in-house crew um, to do a better job. Uh, but the production, uh, as far as the visuals, was, was real good. The app itself works real good. Um, but, you know, they need to get some 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 help on the commentating. They need to get some, some set referees, some set judges, you know, and uh, things like that. And also, I noticed that at the 32nd mark, they were blowing a whistle. Um, you know, that was a little different for me. But, you know, hey. You know, whatever whatever floats your boat. I don't I don't know if they're gonna continue to do that, or was that just something that was was uh, Chicago Chicago had going on? Um, but anyway, I just wanted to get my thoughts on the fight last night. Oh oh, and I gotta talk about this. I'll be remiss if I did not. Um, Conor McGregor and the uh, Khabib fight. You know, I know this is I want to talk boxing on here, but I gotta talk about this man. Uh, Conor McGregor came in the ring, man. You know, right after Jesse Vargas and Delorme May went off, Conor McGregor was walking to the cage, you know. Conor McGregor was walking to the cage, and I caught that just in time, man. Um, Conor McGregor came in the ring. I thought he looked it drained. Um, I thought he looked it flat. And uh, Khabib came in there and, and did what he was supposed to do. He, he, looked, he looked like, uh, well, you could tell that he really disliked Conor, man. And, you know, that was evident. By what happened after the fight, um, you know, uh, it was total, total melee after the fight. And uh, I'm going to keep my comments to myself about that, um, you know. But, you know, a lot of people are talking about it. Um, everybody formed their own opinion about it. And um, the guy was upset, man. The guy was upset. Connor does a lot of things to provoke people. And, um, you know, uh, I'm not saying what, what Khabib did was right. You know what I mean? I'm not saying what Conor did was right, but I'm just laying the facts down. A lot of times, Conor McGregor, uh, you know, he does a lot of things to provoke this man. He, you know, the, the guy could be said on a, the uh, post-press conference that he talked about his father, talked about his religion. You know, these guys got real, real, real personal, man. Uh, you know, the Russians and the Irish, man, those guys were out there fighting um, throughout the arena, fighting outside. It turned into a big, a big, a big brawl, man. And I'm sure we have not heard the last of that. You know what I mean? I just had to mention it, man. It was a good fight. It was an entertaining fight. Uh, Conor McGregor, you know, he, he just seemed like uh, he was out of gas. He was out of gas early. And, uh, 
You know, he was out of gas in the Floyd fight too. I think um, for him being a for it being his first fight, man, I think he gave Floyd, you know, he gave Floyd some trouble early on, man, and you know he did a real good job fighting Floyd. But then you can see the fatigue set in, man, and Floyd just went in there and and destroyed him. Um, Conor McGregor needs to work on his endurance, man. He need to stop drinking that whiskey that he's selling and doing all the partying, man. If he wants to, if he wants to fight, he need to uh, dedicate himself 100%. You know, he got to find out what he loved about the sport in the beginning, and he got to get that again, man, and go out there and um, you know do his thing, man. Because I don't want to see him get hurt, man. Uh, he fight this dude again, man. This dude. You know, this dude didn't want to let him go, man. He would try to rip his head off, man. If you could see, his, his, he didn't really have his neck, man. He just, like, had his head and was just trying to rip it off his neck. You know what I mean? And uh, Conor McGregor tapped out, man. But it was a good fight, man. Hot off to both of those men. Um, you know, one thing you will not hear on this channel, um, you will not hear uh, me call a fighter a bum. You know what I mean? Um, they have to do something really, really really uh bad for me to call him a bum man i don't believe in that man every fighter goes in there and risks their life what they do it's not no joke man and i respect them and um yeah that's it man you're not gonna hear me calling no fighter a bum man um but you know i just wanted to get on here a little bit and talk about um the zone card and you know i had to mention that mcgregor khabib thing uh last night but you know i'm gonna get up out of here man uh if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do so and um, hit the like button. And I'm gonna getting a lot of good comments, man. I've been I've been uh, conversating with these guys in the comment section. I appreciate your comments, man. Please keep them coming. I love to love to talk boxing, man. So when you guys comment, man, it you know it gives me a different perspective on things. Some things I don't 100% agree agree with. But sometimes, you know, you guys open my eyes to something I didn't see. But this is Big Will for Big Faces Worldwide. I'll holler back.